Hi, this is Bob from Insidium, and in this Constraints tutorial, we'll make some dynamic tendrils. We'll use the tendrils modifier to affect some particles. We'll use constraints to make sure they don't intersect and keep them under control. And then we'll turn those constraints to trails and mesh them using the spline mesher. So let's use our constraints object now to give us more control and accuracy over a nice kind of wiggly tendril scene. So uh, in the emitter, we want to take our emitter and we're going to go to the object tab. Now I just want one particle to be spat out uh, from a specific point. So the best emitter shape for that is defined emission which brings us these five cubes and we get a particle per cube. Let's just go to the display settings of that emitter and make them circle so we can see them. So there we go. And the beauty of defined emission is we can change this. It could be a circular emission. Uh, we can do it with a 3D grid. Um, it's a really underutilized emitter shape, the defined emission. I like it a lot. So let's go back to inline and we only need one count which means we're going to get one particle being spat out there. Perfect. So now we want to turn this into a kind of a wiggly tendril. So we do that with a modifier. Let's go to the modifiers menu and we'll go to a generate modifier and we'll pick tendril. Now straight away, we just get this constant stream of particles and it looks like that birth particle is spawning a load of static particles behind it. That isn't actually what's happening, but I'll explain that in a bit. Right, so let's go to our tendril modifier and by default it's set to scene length tendril and that's not what we want so I'm going to deselect that and now we've got this tendril length window and the default is 90 frames so what that means is the particle will go for 90 frames and we'll get a 90 frame long tendril now these aren't static spawned particles this is a constant stream of particles which are coming out of this emitter and dying at frame 90 and this becomes obvious what's happening and how this works for the effect we want when we add another force modifier so let's put a, a turbulence in there and now we can see what's happening. We're getting this constant stream of particles, but it's giving us the illusion that it is a connected tendril to this origin point. So that looks really nice. So what we can do from that, we can make a trail out of it and then mesh that trail if we want. So let's do that. Let's go to generators and we'll choose a trail generator. And it's asking which emitter do you want to create a trail from? So let's drag in our emitter. Now this isn't going to work straight away because what's happening is our birth particle is creating this kind of traced trail but our tendril particles are doing nothing and we need to change this so the trail object is going to connect these tendril particles instead of tracing the birth particles. Let's go to the trail object and under the algorithm we're going to change it from no connections to tendrils connections and now we can see it's working if I just make the emitter invisible so now we've got this trail that grows on and it wiggles around with our turbulence so it's looking great so let's mesh that we'll go to generators and we'll pick a spline mesher It's asking which object do you want to mesh so let's drag in our trail and there we have got our mesh. Let's just hit ND to see the lines. We can subdivide that to smoothen it out a bit. We can do more subdivisions, of course, but for now we'll just leave it at one so it runs smoothly. And in the scale, uh, the size pull down, we've got this scale spline. And I can look, we can point the edge. So we've got it going down to a point. So that's looking really nice. Um, and that's using the tendril modifier to create this really nice wiggly tendril. So what do we need constraints for? Well, here is one of the issues. If I just make those invisible and display the particles again. If I really crank up my turbulence strength, you can see that the end particles are more affected and they're really getting pushed around the place so if i then activate my trail again you'll see the result of that 
is that that connection kind of gets lost and we lose this um, tendril feel and we get this very kind of linear connection. And no matter what we do with this trail to change the spline type or the intermediate points, we can't fix this, um, uh, this kind of linear uh, trail um, connection. It just doesn't work. But what we are able to do is we can use constraints to stop these particles from being forced so far apart, which means that our trail connection algorithm will work once more. So let's try that. Um, in the turbulence, let's just, well, we'll leave the turbulence as it is. So we know that this has broken it. So how do we fix it? Let's go to dynamics and we're going to bring in a constraints object. And the we're going to connect these particles together. So let's go to connections. Now we don't want birth particles, birth connections, because that doesn't work. Because these are new particles all of the time. So just connecting them at birth isn't going to work for us. We need to connect them within a distance. So let's hit distance. We're going to select it on. And let's just leave it default and see what happens. In fact, I'm just going to go to my emitter and go to display and... Uh, display constraints tick that so we can see them so now let's see what happens well our constraints have been formed and those constraints are keeping those particles close enough together so that our trail doesn't get messed up that connection algorithm and now we can see we've got a really erratic turbulence but our trail is being kept together and that is because our constraints are working and if we dolly in you can see that we've got loads of constraints active here because what's happening is each particle is searching within, within a 40 centimeter radius so let's just say this particle is searching this radius and it's connecting to up to eight particles within that radius so we can see we've got all of these interconnected um, constraints we could put fewer constraints, which is going to make this kind of less rigid. Let's have a look. So now we've got far fewer constraints and it's going to be a bit more organic and a bit more wobbly, but we're kind of getting out of control a bit. And then there's so much energy in that scene as those constraints are pushing and pulling that um, it's going berserk again and we're losing it. So we can fix that by having more constraints, which will make it act slightly less organically, but it's still looking really nice, isn't it? Um, and that's stopping that erraticness. Another way of stopping the erraticness is, let's put those connections back down to two. So two connections isn't enough to hold this, and eventually so much energy gets created in the scene that it breaks. But what we can do is add more accuracy to this simulation, which will probably sort this out. So let's hit Control D to bring up our Cinema 4D project settings. We can go to the X Particles tab, and let's increase the default subframe steps to three and the default iterations to five. Now, this is going to make our constraints more rigid and the um, calculations more accurate. And my guess is that this will be enough now to stop that going completely out of control. And that guess is incorrect because it's still going out of control. So let's try 10 iterations. Okay, and we're losing this one here. So that's telling me, let's go back to the constraints, to so the connections. Um, perhaps, yeah, that's odd. I've got a feeling that we just haven't got a, we haven't got a connection there for that one. We're losing this connection because it's becoming too far apart. So what we could do is increase that radius up a little bit. Let's see if that's enough to hold it together. Yeah, so that's done it. So we've just made those connections slightly longer, which has uh, meant that... Um, we've got we've got more of a constraint between those two and we've prevented it from stretching so that's pretty good that's going to do and let's just go to our x particles uh, settings again let's put those iterations back down to five and let's see whether we don't need as many iterations because we've increased that connection length and yeah so that's that's worked for us great 
So now what we're able to do is we've got a really nice organic tendril and we've got really high turbulence, but we've managed to constrain it, which means we're not kind of breaking the sim and our trail um, connection algorithm is managing to stay intact. And now we've got this really nice erratic um, tendril wiggling around the place. Fantastic. So as you can see, there's various different strategies in keeping this under control. There's the connection distance, there's the connection limit, and then there's also the project simulation settings of substeps and iterations, uh, all of which can help. Right, so the other thing we're going to use connections, uh, use constraints for, is to stop when we bring in more of these tendrils, stop them from intersecting with each other, which obviously will ruin the illusion of any realism if you're, I don't know, simulating octopus legs or whatever. So let's just do a bit of tidying up before we bring in a new tendril. So the emitter, I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to rename it emitter tendril 1. Let's go to the trail, and I'm going to rename that trail tendril one okay and that'll do us for now right so what i want to do is bring in a new emitter so i'm just going to highlight this one hit control drag it which makes a new one and i'm going to rename that tendril two and i want to move it because at the moment it's, it's just on top of the other one so i'm just going to hit alt d to show my axis which i hid earlier on All right there it is and let's just move that to the side and I'll just make the spline mesh and the trail invisible for now so now we should have two all right so that's great we've got two tendrils being made something weird is happening can you see that when they're born our distance constraints are joining each tendril together and that's because they don't care that these are coming from different emitters they're just being told if particles within a distance connect to them so this isn't going to work for us we need to be able to separate these out so only one tendril is connected to itself and not um, one of its neighbors so how are we going to do that well we're going to do that using particle groups which is going to give us loads of control so in emitter tendril one Let's go to the Groups tab, and we're going to Create Add Group. And let's just rename that straight off the bat so we're organised. So let's call that Group Tendril 1. And then part, uh, Emitter Tendril 2, let's go to the Groups tab, Create Add Group, and this one we'll rename it and call it Particle Group Tendril 2. Excellent. So now this is this is the key. What we can do is go to the constraints to our connections tab and we can say these distance constraints only join particles in the same group, which is really useful. So now that won't happen. They're only connecting themselves which is exactly what we wanted so now we have two tendrils which are flying around the place and they're looking really good so let's we need to or at the moment we're only creating a trail from one so let's get our trail tendril one and copy it and we'll just rename that and call it trail tendril two and in the object tab we need to put in tendril to emitter there we go and let's just make those both emitters invisible for now so now we've got two trails excellent and in our spline mesher we need to at the moment we're only meshing trail tendril one so let's drag in trail tendril two as well and now we've got our two trails being meshed fantastic now, the, uh, the next problem is that these tendrils are looking really nice, but they are going to be intersecting themselves and intersecting each other. And that's going to, I mean, it depends what you're rendering. If you're kind of 
a, a back from a, a much if the camera's f- like quite far away from them you're not up close you're not necessarily going to notice that they are intersecting and um, you might not need to but if you're getting close up to this and you want to see those tendrils kind of wrapping around each other then obviously we can't have them um, penetrating each other's surface it doesn't work so let's use constraints to sort that out as well so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the collisions tab and we're going to activate collisions and let's see what happens so this should prevent them from intersecting each other and because we have same emitter checked it should prevent them from intersecting themselves but we get this problem now did you see that artifact let's get this playing again now every now and again we'd sorted this sim out we weren't getting that weird trail kind of linear trail problem but now we've turned on these connections uh, these uh, collisions we're now getting this problem of these particles being pushed away from each other now if i uncheck same emitter this won't happen So at the moment, because we've unchecked same emitter, the separate tendrils won't be intersecting with each other. They will bounce off each other, but each tendril will be able to intersect itself. But you can see without that, we're not getting that annoying problem. So having the same emitter checked is causing that issue. Why? Well, it is because, let's just make one of those invisible. What is happening is, let's make those particles visible. So what's happening is this. With the same emitter checked, if this particle tries to intersect this particle, it'll come across and bounce off it. And that's what's happening. It's bouncing off the particle, being shoved away so far that the constraint isn't strong enough to hold it, and it's creating that um, problem that we had right at the beginning when we set up this scene. So this is the issue. So if you don't want your individual tendrils to intersect themselves, we have to have same emitter active, which means we're going to get that that we're going to get that problem. So how do we mitigate against that? Well, it's using the same tools that we used before to stop it from happening. Um, so we can bring in some friction and we could even bring in more constraints to, um, to stop them and to hold them in place. So let's try a couple of different methods. So we'll just make these active again. All right. So here we go, let's see. So we should at some point get this error where we get these horrible linear lines which messes up the look of it. There we go, messes up that look of realism. So let's just see, what if we, in our connections, make one more connection? So these particles should be joined in a stronger fashion. Let's see if we get to that point. That mitigates against that nasty bit of linear horribleness. And it has, that's done it. So that's made it stronger, which means that it solved that problem. And I would much rather add one more connection than add some friction, because what friction, it does work, but it tends to take out some of the, uh, we only want the same group selected for friction. It tends to take out some of the dynamism of this simulation it does work but you can see it slowed it down somewhat because it's it's causing friction between all of these particles um, and it takes out some of that energy of the scene this can be really useful um, for certain sims but for this one i'm going to switch friction off because i like it being wild and them wrangling all over the place and you're seeing we're getting these really nice um interacting tendrils they aren't intersecting themselves or each other and this is looking fantastic so that's another example of how we can use these constraints these incredibly versatile constraints to help us set up particle simulations to get the look that we're after